In the major floods of the 1990s, the Seattle District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers distributed 2.2 million sandbags to local communities. That's enough to stretch end on end from Seattle to Missoula, Montana. During the flood of 1990 Thanksgiving, the water came up to here. Now about 900 homes were damaged during that flood and two men lost their lives. It seems people just don't realize how serious flooding can be. I know I've got to learn to prepare for flooding so I can do something before it happens. Sandbag construction is a centuries old technique and has changed little over the years. Where people power is still the proven method, sandbags are used to prevent overtopping of levees, direct a river's current flow to specific areas, construct ring dikes around boils on levee backslopes and toes, to weigh down visqueen and straw bales, and to build supports on backslopes and on toes of saturated levees. <laughs> Sand is the best soil to use in the bags because it shapes so well. And when the sand is in the bags, they can pack together to keep the flood water out. Although a sandy soil is the most desirable for filling sand bags, any other available materials such as silt, clay, gravels, or a mixture of these may be used when necessary, or if they are the only ones available. Save yourself time and energy by following some basic rules while filling sandbags. Filling sandbags is normally a two or three person operation. Always wear gloves to protect your hands from the coarse filling material and the treated burlap bags. One team member should crouch with feet apart and arms extended and place the bottom of the empty bag on the ground. Hold the bag open and form a one and a half inch folded collar at the top. A second team member empties a fully rounded shovel of material into the open end, filling the untied bag approximately two thirds full. A third member stockpiles the stacks. Now remember to rotate duties between team members often to reduce muscle strain. Learn proper sandbag placement procedures. This is very important. First remove the debris from the area where the bags are placed and place the two-thirds full bags lengthwise and parallel to the direction of flow with the untied open end facing upstream. Fill those spots first. Start at the downstream end of the operation, about one foot landward from the river's edge, and continue upstream. Fold the open end of the bag under the filled portion. Place the succeeding bags tightly against and partially overlapping the previous one. Offset adjacent rows or layers by one half bag length to avoid continuous joints. Form a tight seal and compact and shape each bag by walking on it and continue the same process as each layer is placed. Generally when working with sandbags on a single stack, it is recommended not to go more than three sandbags high. That would be one, two, three, but there are exceptions to the fact. Higher single stack placement can be used effectively as a barricade to protect structures from high water damage. Single stack placement works well in flood areas where there is no stream flow velocity or danger from floating debris such as logs or tree stumps. Use the pyramid method of sandbag placement to increase the height of the levee and determine how high to raise the levee based upon available flood forecasts. This method increases the amount of bags needed to cover an area. Place the sandbags to form a pyramid by laying equal numbers of rows on the bottom as there are vertical layers. Use this rule of thumb when determining the dimensions of the pyramid. One bag equals about one foot, three bag widths equal about two and a half feet, and three bags in height equal about one foot. The sand boil is created when water seeps through the foundation of a levee and transports material with it which threatens the levee integrity. When ringing the sand boil, there should be a minimum of a two to three foot radius from the center of the boil to the inside edge of the ring dike. Take care to contain the entire area within the ring dike. 
Don't place sandbags directly on the boil. Pressure applied to plug the boil will cause water seeping through the levee to seek other avenues and could cause levee failure. A spillway section must be built to allow water to run over the ring dike in a controlled manner and divert overflow water away from the ring dike. And when the spillway water runs clear, the ring dike is completed. Remember, safety first. Use proper lifting techniques. Lift with your legs and bend at the knees to save wear and tear on your back. Always wear heavy work gloves when handling treated burlap sandbags. Dress in layers and wear reflective clothing so you're clearly visible at night. Watch out for heavy equipment unloading dirt or large rocks and keep alert for truck backup alarms. Use rubber gloves and appropriate clothing if contact with the water is unavoidable. In addition to this video on proper sandbag methods, make sure you study the Corps' latest brochure on proper procedures and safety tips on sandbagging techniques. For more information or questions about unique sandbag situations in your area, please call the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Emergency Management Branch at 206-764-3406.